Okay, so we've talked about means of anesthesia. Now the surgeons are closing their wound and we need to get ready for emergency room anesthesia and extubation. And you're gonna to have to discuss with your attending the specific details and specific uh, extubation plan. But typically, at this point towards the end of the case, we're gonna dial down our volatile anesthetic. And the timing of when you dial things down and the, all of that information you should discuss with your attending, that's just part of your learning. But at some point, you're gonna be turning off your volatile anesthetic. Also, you may wanna change your gas mixture at this point. If you've been on, for instance, a mixture of air and oxygen, you may at this point want to turn the air off and go to 100% oxygen um, to uh, prepare to optimize apneic time for extubation in case your patient has some breath holding or some other issues, you maximize your apneic time. Now, if your patient is on a gas mixture that includes nitrous to keep the patient awake, well then, you don't really want to turn the nitrous off until you're ready to wake the patient up. And since the surgeons are still putting the sutures in, you want to hold off on that, but think about it, be ready for it. The other thing I'm going to mention, again discussing with your attending, is a neuromuscular blockade reversal. In my opinion, I personally believe that every patient who receives a non-depolarizing muscle relaxant deserves to be reversed, unless they have a history of PONV, or unless the surgical procedure that's being performed um, uh, where it would be detrimental if the patient had some degree of post-operative nausea and vomiting, such as you know neck surgery, where if they were vomiting, it would, might open the wound and something like that. Neostigmine, the reversal agent that we use, um, can be emetogenic and can contribute to post-operative nausea and vomiting. So only in those select patients will I consider not reversing a patient, and only if they have returned of neuromuscular function at the end of the case by twitch monitor. You should um, only reverse a patient if they have, according to the drug insert guidelines, two twitches out of four. So a minimum of two out of four twitches before you administer uh, reversal of neuromuscular blocking drugs. Okay. The other thing I'm going to let you know as a first year is uh, I personally recommend giving your um, reversal agent slowly and in a fixed ratio where you mix um, your neostigmine and your glycopyrrolate together in one syringe. I think it's easier for you as a first year to do that. Uh, and you can um, talk to your attending about that fixed ratio. But basically put those two drugs in a syringe and give it slowly. If you give it quickly, you may notice that the heart rate's gonna go up real quick. Now, don't be fooled and think that your patient's waking up or the patient's gonna jump off the table and try to administer some additional anesthetic at that point the heart rate's going up in response to the glycopyrrolate in your reversal agents, okay? Now let's say then they've finished stapling or suturing, you've reversed your patient, the anesthetic's turned off and you're ready to wake your patient up. The important thing to note about extubation is that you should never extubate a patient in stage two anesthesia. That can lead to complications which could include bronchospasm. You also, never want to extubate your patient without your attending in the room. Um, obviously, you, you don't want to do anything without your attending. So now, in terms of determining when your patient um, is in stage one and when it's appropriate to remove the endotracheal tube, um, a couple things that I want to let you know. Reaching up to pull out the endotracheal tube is not necessarily a sign that a patient's in stage one an an anesthesia. Okay. What you want to see is purposeful movement, purposeful responses. Okay. So spontaneously opening your eyes, okay. opening their eyes on command when you ask them to open your eyes. If they squeeze your fingers and release your fingers um, on command, those are all signs that you can remove the endotracheal tube. Okay. So that's important to know. Now, um, if you're going to extubate a patient, it's important that you have a couple pieces of equipment ready. You must have your mask with your syringe for your endotracheal cuff immediately available, and suction. We also call this the wake-up wand for the reason that you can often provide some stimulus to wake up the patient. If you, if you suction them, they, they may open their eyes, you may see that they're ready for extubation, but you want to suction any secretions before you pull an endotracheal tube. And you'll see here the reason why I taped the pilot balloon 
to the end of my endotracheal tube because now I'm not searching for it because it can often get lost somewhere, but it's taped right here. And once I'm sure that it's appropriate to extubate the patient, I will confirm with my attending that it's appropriate. And then I will deflate the endotracheal tube cuff. I, you see these tabs that I placed here? It makes it super convenient that you can just pull the tape up right now. Okay, and then make sure that you have your hand on the bag and then you, you, you can talk to the patient. I'm gonna take the tube out now and give a little breath as you remove the endotracheal tube. Now here's an important point. You now have a very dirty endotracheal tube in your hand. So make sure that you have a garbage can immediately available to dispose of that tube, okay? And because you placed your mask here, you're now able to very quickly put this oxygen mask on this patient. Tell them, take some nice big deep breaths in and out. And at the same time, you can place your hand on the bag. You can adjust the pop-off valve here and feel that the patient's taking breaths in and out and assist as needed, okay? But at this point, because the patient was making purposeful movements and um, was responding to command, uh, you should most likely have no further difficulty. However, be vigilant that the patient isn't breath holding or isn't um, in bronchospasm. And again, you can do that by monitoring their ability to ventilate themselves by having your hand on the bag as you put the mask over their face. And at this point, you're ready to transport the patient to uh, the post-operative care unit, the PACU.